Hello children, welcome to JMC We Learning Program. Today we are meeting you from grade 9 English subject. So we are starting from second term first lesson. Let's see what is the first lesson of second term. That is the lesson 5 and it is called a second chance called tomorrow. Uh, normally we do our things, we plan our things to finish, to start and finish from a day. Or oh, there, are, there are some quotes like, we have to do the things by today. We have to start our things today. We have to plan our things today. But you just imagine, if we are unable to do something today, what is happening then? Do you think we have to cancel it or just give up it? Or we, can we start it that tomorrow? Tomorrow, the word tomorrow. If we can't do something today, there is another day called tomorrow. So that's the lesson what we are going to learn today, a second chance called tomorrow. If we are unable to do something today, we can do that tomorrow. Okay, when we are starting the lesson, there is an activity uh, and that is act out. What is an act out? Act out is a, is a conversation, conversation be among people. It can be between two people or among few people. So when we are starting this lesson, we can see an act out. So we'll see what is the act out about. It is the first day of the new school term. Some grade 9 students of Kurulgama Mahavidyale are talking about their vacation. When the first term finishes, we know when we are coming to the second term, you have a vacation. So after this uh, first vacation, when you are coming to school during the second uh, term, you have a lot to talk with your friends. So here, there are few characters, few students, few friends. They are making a conversation regarding their vacation. So we'll see what they have to talk about their vacation. There are a few characters. So uh, let's see what they are talking about their vacation. Good morning friends, what are you talking about? Good morning, we are talking about our vacation. They are talking about their vacation. Oh, the vacation, it just came and went. Hey, that's true. Why do vacations end so fast? So that's what the, normally the students feel. Why the vacation is ends so fast? Yes, it's a pity, isn't it? I had planned to do many things during the vacation, but couldn't complete most of them. Normally, we have many plans to do, but sometimes we couldn't do that. So, the same thing has happened to Farzana. She has planned many things, but she couldn't do that. Then, Raju says, in my case, I managed to do many things. I, planned, I planted vegetables in our home garden. So that is one thing which was done by Raju. He has planted vegetables in their home garden. I watered them every day. Not only planted them, he has watered them every day. So that is another thing what he has done. I finished all my homework and read three books. He has done his all homework and not only that, he has completed three books. He has read three books. I managed to visit the planetarium too. He has visited the planetarium. That means Raju has uh, done many things during his vacation. He has uh, used it very usefully. Then Mihimal says, that's great. I tied my room but couldn't go anywhere. What, he, what she has done is she has cleaned her room, make it clean and clear. So, I wanted to study and prepare short notes but I simply had not time. That was said by Chenita. That means Chenita has planned to do few things, but he hadn't uh, enough time. So he just gave up all those things. Then Farasana says, no time? Come on, there are 24 hours in a day. Farasana says, you can't say like that. We have 24 hours a day, so you can do whatever you want. Hmm, that's true. Maybe that's just an excuse. I think we waste most of our time. That can be happen when you have planned something. You may not do those things as you plan. But some people are there. They can plan all the things and they can complete that as well. 
samadhya they can't they couldn't do that but don't give up that you have a second chance call tomorrow that's what we are going to learn through this lesson so let's move to last part of this lesson okay you have a point there my term test marks were not very good i'll start studying from tomorrow itself now we knew that chenitha couldn't do as they as he planned the things what he planned he could do that during the vacation but he thinks now he has an, another chance that's called tomorrow because his friend was saying that we have 24 hours as well as we have tomorrow if we couldn't do something today we can start that tomorrow yes better late than never you can be late but don't give up that that's the idea of that sentence let's have a plan and start studying from tomorrow so they are going to start they are studying from tomorrow have a plan and study you have got to be kidding i planned many things but most of them were not successful there are some situation that we are planning the things but we are unable to do that so the same thing uh, mihmal has faced the same thing remember the lesson in the grade 8 english textbook plan the work work the plan you have learned that last year there was a lesson called plan the work work the plan so you before doing something you can plan that work and after that planning that you can do the work so that's called plan the work work the plan if you have if you are unable to do something you can move to that uh, theory yes that's true you have to not only plan the work but also work the plan and that's what we are going to do from tomorrow so there are some friends who were unable to do few things but others are encouraging them and they are planning to do all those things by tomorrow because they couldn't do during the vacation okay now the activity is over now we are moving to the questions and answers we'll see what are the questions and uh, let's plan how to write the answers okay read the conversation and answer the questions so that is what we are going to do next there is a con we have already learned the conversation and they have given some questions here and we are going to discuss what are the answers for these questions when we are writing answers for some questions we have to think about the time now here we can see different tenses they have used here we can see they have used present continuous tense and sometimes they have used past tense so we have to thoroughly keep in our mind to give the correct answer according to the tense given so let's go to questions one by one and we'll discuss the answers what are the students talking about so they are asking what are the students talking about we know that the question is given from present continuous tense so when we are giving the answer we have to use present continuous tense so what they were talking about we knew that they were talking about their vacation so how you can give the answer for this question what are the students talking about we can write the answer like this the students are talking about their vacation who are talking about their vacation the students so we can start from that part the students are talking about their vacation then write two things raju did during the vacation when we go through the act out we saw that raju has done many things let's point out those things again in my case i managed to do many things i planted vegetable that is one thing which was done by raju and he watered them he watered his planted then he has finished his homework and read three books this is the third thing what he has done he has done his homework as as, as well as he has read three books so there are a four points which you can use are ah, not only that there is another thing he has visited the planetarium too so he has done five things so when you are answering that question you can write any from those five so when you are starting to write the answer you can uh, start it like this now they are asking write two things raju did during the vacation so we can understand in this question it was used the past tense was used there so when we are giving the answer we have to use the past tense so how you can give the answer for that 
you can write like this Raju we will see what he has done again Raju managed to do many things he has planted vegetables you can write he watered the plant plants he has done his homework he has read three books he has visited planetarium so you can write uh, two things from those five no need to write all those five things because only two things were asked so you can write only two things so when you are writing the answer you have to write using simple past tense then who couldn't go anywhere during the holidays again couldn't go because this thing has uh, finished in the past so here also they are asking from pa using past tense so who couldn't go anywhere during the holidays we'll see who couldn't go anywhere right mihimali mihimali she is saying i tied in my room but couldn't go anywhere so she is the person who couldn't go anywhere so the answer is mihimali couldn't go anywhere during the holidays right the fourth question what did chenitha want to do during the vacation what he wanted to do right here he says I wanted to study and prepare short notes. He wanted to do, uh, study his studies. He has to do his studies and prepare short notes. But I simply had no time. That means the answer is Chenita. What did Chenita want to do during the vacation? Chenita wanted to do because here again they are asking the question from past tense. Okay, what did Chenita want to do during the vacation? Chenita wanted to study and prepare some short notes. So you can write like that. Chenita didn't do his studies and he couldn't make his short notes. So that is the answer for fourth question. Right, let's move to the fifth one. Why couldn't he do what he had planned? Let's see. He is telling here. I simply had not time. He is telling that is the reason he wanted to study, he wanted to make short notes, but this is the reason why he couldn't do those things. He simply had no time. So when you are writing the answer, you can write here again, the question was asked using past tense. So you can write, Chenitha didn't have enough time to do what he has planned. Right, the last question, who says the following? We have to find who is the student or who is the friend uh, said this thing. So, we'll see. Why do vacations end so fast? Right, here we can see that. Why do vacations end so fast? Mihimali has said that. So, here you can say as the answer, Mihimali said this because that is goes to past and so you can say Mihimali said this then I simply had no time who said this Chenita said that so when you are writing the answer you can say here Chenita said this then there are 24 hours in a day yeah we can see that here there are 24 hours in a day who said that Farzana. So, you can write the answer for the C. Farzana said that. Then, better late than never. Who said that? Again, Farzana said it. Better late than never. So, when you are writing the answer for D, there also you can write Farzana said that. Okay, now we have completed our act out as well as we have discussed our questions. So, the first part of this lesson is over now. Let's move to the second part of this lesson. Here we have a learning point. We have a grammar part. We are going to talk about a grammar part in this lesson. So, that is talking about future events. In this part, we are learning how to express our ideas regarding future tense. Okay, 
uh, how can you express your idea about future? When I ask that question, normally will word comes to your mind, will. When we talk about future, will is the main word that we are using. But is that only thing what we can use for describe future events? So in this lesson, we are going to learn what are other ways that we can talk, we can use to talk about future events. So here is a summarize about what I am going to teach you under this lesson. So we will go through these points, then I move into all these points one by one. So you can use the following different structures to describe future events, not only using will or uh, not only future simple tense, you can use these different ways to express your future ideas. Okay. Let's go to the first point. The children will go to the park at the weekend. Here I have highlighted will go. Here what I have already discussed with you that is future simple tense. Normally we use future simple tense or we use will plus verb to express something we have predicated. We have predicated about that that this uh, will be happening in future this will happen in future so that is the first point what i am going to talk under this lesson then the next one is chenita will be studying for his exam the whole of next week here you can see not only will i have added b as well as verb plus ing so we are calling this future continuous under future continuous we are talking an action in progress in the future that something is going to happen continuously in future so we can use future simple tense as well as future continuous when we are talking about future then the third one what we are going to learn is bit different that means when you see this part at once the future idea may not come to your mind the train leaves at 10 o'clock when you see this verb verb with s you know we use that in present simple tense so you can uh, you have you may have an idea like this how can we use present simple tense to express our future ideas so that's what we are going to learn during this lesson so simple present tense timetabled event what is the meaning of timetabled event that's mean something we have planned something come Confirmed to do in future right then the fourth point is look at the dark clouds it is going to rain so here you can see subject helping verb and going so this part is normally we talk as be plus going to plus verb stem so that is the fourth part that is predication based on present evidence that is the uh, fifth part we are going to learn under this lesson last part of this lesson is they are moving into a new house next week this is the example what i was given so here you can see are moving that is present continuous tense so present continuous tense that also an arrangement what we have done in the present what we are going to do in future so these six points under this lesson we are going to discuss okay let's move to the first point simple future tense simple future tense that is most common way of talking about future so here we use will to talk about rapid decisions and predications here i said to you earlier as well in future simple tense we are using will word so we using will at once we get the idea that we are going to talk about something which is going to happen in the future so this is a decision but it can't it may happen it sometimes it may not happen so we predicate this I can say I will come that means I may come sometimes I may not come so we are normally predicate something so in future simple tense we use will 
to express the future idea. So, let's see how we are using will and make the sentences. This is the structure of future simple tense. First, we are using the subject. That means there are a few subjects when we are talking about uh, subjects in grammar lesson. So, you can use any subject, but after subject, you have to use will. Definitely after the subject, we are using the word will. After will, we have to use the verb, verb in present tense, then the object. Let us repeat that again. First, we have to talk, we have to write the subject then we have to use will and give the idea that we are talking about something in future then the verb in present after that the object these are the four points what we have to use when we are talking about future simple tense so i have given few examples let's go through these examples and learn more about these tense i will go to the bookshop here you can see first I have written I, I is the subject, then definitely I have to use the word will, then it gives you the idea about the future, after that you have to use the verb. The structure, first we are talking about the subject, then we are adding will to express the idea of future, then verb in present tense and the object. So, let us go to few examples, then you can learn about the future simple tense more. I have given three examples, let us read this and uh, try to understand the idea. I will go to the bookshop, here I is the subject, who is doing this? I. Then we have to write will to express this is something in something happening in future. I will go that is the verb and I have used that in present tense. I will go to the bookshop that is the object. Sometimes there may be, a, be an object, sometimes there may be not. But that is okay. These main three parts should be there the subject, will and verb or if there is an object you can add that as well. So, I will go to the bookshop, I is the subject, will is uh, giving you the idea about future, then go is the verb, then bookshop is the object. Then the second one, I will graduate from university, here again the subject is I, then will I have used to give the future idea, then graduate is the verb from university, university is the object here. Then the last example, I will buy a sari for the wedding. The subject is I, will gives you the future idea. Then sari uh, is the object and the verb is buy. Okay, now we have finished uh, and completed the first point of uh, learning future tense, simple future tense. Then we are moving to the second point. Not only future simple tense. I told you already, we have different ways of expressing about future. So, the second point what I am going to talk is future continuous tense. Continuous, you have the idea what is continuous, that something is happening continuously. So, some actions can be happen in the future continuously. So, if you want to discuss about something like that, you can use this tense. So here an action in progress in the future, something which is going to happen continuously in the future. So to express that kind of idea, we are using future continuous tense. So let us see what is the structure of this tense. First you have to use the subject, then we have to use will be. In the first point we use only will will after that the verb but here I am using be after will what is the reason for that because the verb I am not using present I am using the verb with ing form that means the verbal noun when you are, we are using the verb as a verbal noun then you have to use a helping verb so with will we are using be as the helping verb so first you have to write the subject then will with B, from will we are giving the idea about future, we are using B as a helping verb because we are writing the verb in ing form. Then after that you can add the object as well. 
So, this is the third part and this is the fourth part of the structure. Subject will be verb plus ing then the object. Let us go to the example and let us discuss about that. I will be visiting Hawaii next month. Here what is the subject? I is given as a subject. Then will be we have to use because we are talking about future continuous uh, action. So will be and after that we are using the verb plus ing. Visit is the verb which is used here. So visit plus ing means visiting. So I will be visiting Hawaii where I am going to visit that is Hawaii. So that is the object of this sentence. So I have used subject will be verb plus ing then the object. Then the second example I will be playing soccer on Tuesday. Again the subject is I. We have used the subject first. After that will be to give the future idea. Then the verb plus ing as we discussed. Then object object is there. The third example is I will be traveling around Europe. Here again the subject is I. Then again I am using will be verb plus ing. Then the object is around Europe. So this is how we can express our idea about future using future continuous tense. First we have to use the subject then will be then verb plus ing then the object. Let us move to the third point. Now we have already learned two parts in future events. Uh, first one was simple future tense. We use subject, will, verb and object. Then in the second part we learn future continuous tense. There we uh, used to write the sentence structure as subject, will be, verb plus ing, then the object. Now we are moving to the third part of this lesson. That is simple present tense. When we are talking about simple present tense, the simple idea what is coming to your mind is that what we are used, what we used to do for a long period in the present. That is what in that time only we are using simple present tense. That is how we have learnt. Simple present tense express an idea which is done for a long time in the present tense. But here I am talking this topic under future events. So you may have a question how we can apply present simple tense to future to give future ideas. So here we are going to learn something that we, we, that we have planned in the present. It, it is confirmed. It is planned. We can use present simple tense to give the future idea. We use the present simple for something scheduled. You have scheduled that. You have planned that. Something confirmed to do in future. In that case, simple present tense can be used to give the idea in present, in future. Uh, let us see how the structure comes. First, we are writing the subject the same way how we are writing present simple tense. We are going the uh, structure write that. Subject, then the second one is verb in present, then the third part is the object. This is the structure of present simple tense or we can call that simple present tense. The same structure we use to give the idea about something which is going to happen in the future but it should be scheduled. Here I have given three examples. We will go through that. Okay, Let us move to the first example. The train arrives at 10.30 in the morning. That means it is happening in the future. But it is scheduled. That is why we can use simple present tense to express this idea. So what is the structure? First they have given the subject, the train. And you have to remember that the subject is in singular. So that is what we have to add s when we are writing the verb. When the subject is singular, we have to write the verb in singular as well in simple present tense. So, the train arrives at 10.30 in the morning. So, this is the object. Then the second one, the holidays start next month. The holidays, that is plural, that is the subject and that is plural. So, you can use the verb without s or the verb in plural. 
the when the subject is plural the verb also in plural so the holiday start next month next month is the object of this sentence then she comes here in the evening what is the subject here again she is the subject and the verb is come as i told you earlier the subject is singular so we have to add s here uh, then the verb uh, we can tell like comes then she comes here in the evening that is the object of this sentence so this is the way of expressing not only present simple idea we can use this to express an idea which is going to happen in future but you have to remember that it must be scheduled that uh, you have already planned okay then let's move to the fourth part b plus going to plus verb stem what is b here from b we give the idea that is a helping verb b then going to we have add ing to go then we have added to so be going to then you have to add the verb how we can use this to express an idea in future we use be going to when talking about plans or intentions that you are planning to do something here when we see the word going to is not like you are going now you are going now you are walking that idea is not giving from this from this idea it gives you that you are going to do something later or in the future so you have to use as earlier first the subject then you have to use be going to here i have used be you can change be according to the subject you can use present uh, tense present tense uh, helping verbs am is are instead of be but as the main helping verb i have written it here as be then subject be going to with be you have to use going to that you are going to do something in future then after that you have to write the verb what is you are going to do in future then finally you can use the object as we did in earlier uh, tenses so here are my examples i am going to walk to work today i am going to walk to work today i am here i is the subject as i told you earlier then instead of b according to the subject you have to select what is the helping verb so we know with i we are using am so i am then you can use going to i am going to do this what i am going to do i am going to walk after two you have to use the verb in infinitive form so i am going to walk to work today then the second one they are going to move to london they is the subject here then the helping verb was taken as are according to the subject because they is a plural subject so we have taken are as a helping verb so they are going to that's mean that is going to happen in future so they are going to move again the verb is in infinitive move to london so to london is their object then to make predication based on evidence we can see be careful you are going to fall here this is something different from here now these things the main person is going to do i am going to walk that that i am going to walk walk there here they are going to move that's mean they are the people who are going to do that but here someone another person is predicating that something can uh, happen to another person something is going to happen to another person so here be careful you are going to fall that was telling by another person he is saying that i am going to slipping or some something is going to happen so he is using you are going to fall that can be happen in the future i can see that you might fall that's the idea given in this part look at those dark clouds i think it's going to rain again we are just seeing something in the environment and we are guessing that can be happen in future so here look at those dark clouds i think it's going to rain here subject according to the subject helping verb helping verb was taken 
and going to and then finally we have used the uh, verb there. Okay, this is the fourth part of uh, future events lesson. Okay, let's move to the fifth one. Now, first we have used future simple tense, then we have used future continuous tense, then present simple tense, then be going to plus verb, then the fifth part one is present continuous tense. When you are using present continuous tense, normally when we are talking about present continuous tense, the idea which is coming to your mind is something what we are doing right now. Some person or many people, what they are doing right now continuously for a short period, what they are continuously doing. But here we can use this present continuous tense not only to talk that something we are doing just now, something that going to happen in future also, we can use present continuous tense. That's what this idea gives. The same structure comes here as well. We can use the present continuous for plans or arrangements. Here also like when we, are, when we were talking, I told you, present simple tense also we used to give the idea about something we have already scheduled. Here also the same, something we have scheduled or something we have arranged or something we have planned to do in future, we can use present continuous tense and we can give that idea. So, first you have to write subject as we used to do in earlier lessons, then the helping verb. What are the helping verbs that we can use in present continuous tense? You know that we can use am, is, then are. These are the three helping verbs what we can use uh, in present simple, present continuous tense. Then verb we have to use in ing form because this is a verbal noun that is why we have to use the helping verbs. So, subject helping verb am, is, or are then the verb plus ing that is mean verbal noun then you can use the object. I have given three examples there as well. Let us go through those examples. I am playing cricket tomorrow. Who is playing cricket? I am playing cricket. So, I am the person who is doing that. Now, if I just close this word tomorrow, I am playing cricket. What is the idea was given? The idea is that I am playing cricket now. But I have given the word tomorrow, from that word you can understand this is going to happen in future. This is not happening right now, this is going to happen in future. So, I after I, I am using helping verb that is am, with I, I am using am as the helping verb. So, I am playing the verb, we have to add ing with the verb. So, I am playing cricket. Cricket is the object of this sentence. So, I am playing cricket tomorrow. This is not present continuous idea. This gives you a future idea. Then the second one, they are coming to see us next Monday. They, they is the subject. So, you have to think what is the helping verb comes with they that is are. So, you can use they are coming verb plus ing. They are coming to see us not now. The word was given like next Monday. So, from the word next Monday is give, gives us the idea that this is going to happen in the future. right? So, the last example was given is we are planning a trip. Who are planning the trip? We. So, we is a subject here. We with we, we are using the helping verb are. So, you can write we are planning. Plan is the verb here. You are adding ing. Then we are planning a trip. A trip is the object here. So, this is how we can use present continuous tense to express an idea uh, about future. There, you can either give a word that express an idea about future like tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow, next day, next month. Like that you can give the idea. If it is not an example like this, we are planning a trip. Here I did not give you any idea about the date. But we are planning a trip. From that sentence you can get the idea that this is going to happen in future. So, 
this is how we can use present continuous tense to give the idea about future. Okay, now these are the five points what we have to learn under this uh, lesson. Let us go through these points again. First, we learned simple future tense. Simple future tense is the common tense that we are using to express the idea about future. Then we used future continuous tense that also can be used to give any idea about future tense. Then as the third part we learn simple present tense. Simple present tense you can use not only in present uh, uh, I, to give not only present idea you can use that to give future ideas as well but it should be scheduled you have to keep that in mind then the fourth part what we learn was be going to that means something is going to happen someone is going to do something in future so we are using the structure like this and we can use this to express the idea about future then the last one what we learn was present continuous tense Present continuous tense also you can use not only to give the idea about present, you can use that to give the idea about future tense as well. So these are the five uh, ways what we can use to give any idea about future events. You can not only use will or you not only use, uh, use future simple or future continuous, you can use other three uh, tenses or other three ways to express your future ideas as well. So we have completed this part. You can just repeat these uh, five ideas again and again and you can make some few uh, sentences and you can use in your day to day life and you can practice that as, uh, that as well. Okay. Now we are moving to our next part. This is activity 4 in the pupils textbook and this is an activity uh, which comes under reading. That means they have given us something. The, they have given us an essay type of uh, reading. We have to read it and finally we have to answer the questions given. Normally in your papers as well we, you can see these kind of questions. They have given uh, some paragraphs and end of the paragraphs some questions are there. You have to answer the questions. So to answer questions properly first you have to read these paragraphs given. So that is what we are going to do. We are going to go through these uh, paragraphs and we are going to understand the main points when the when we come to the question part we are reading the questions and we are going to answer those questions and at that time I will explain you how to answer those questions right the topic is 100 meters that means a race so under this uh, topic they have given us few paragraphs so there is a story we have to read this story and we have to identify the main points then we can answer the questions the playground was large. The sports teacher asked me to wait there and disappeared among crowd. I mustn't go anywhere from here. What a crowd of students, boys in white shoes and white socks. How smart they look. They must be from the city. From this part you can understand. Now whoever the person telling this story about us, he has someone who came from a far, far away village to a city. That is why he is calling the other boys as city boys. Now when he sees this environment, it is a bit diff different to him. That is why he is telling that the playground was large. That means maybe he has not seen that kind of big ground earlier. So. Uh, his teacher has said to him not to go anywhere and asked him to stay someplace and he must stay there and he is just uh, enjoying the environment, he is looking the environment and try to understand, try to uh, get an idea about his environment. So he is telling boys in white shoes and white socks, uh, maybe the boy who, who or the girl who is telling this story, he has not seen the uh, students with white shoes and white socks. So that is a bit uh, different thing for him. So that is why he is uh, emphasizing under this paragraph. So however, they must be from the city. So that means the person who is telling us the story, 
have an idea, a different idea about these students. That's why he is telling they must be from the city. I have heard that the boys from the city are a bit arrogant. Now that is the point. Now the boy who has uh, giving uh, uh, us the idea about this uh, environment, he is not a person who lived in a city. He is a person who has come from far away. So when he sees these students with white socks and white shoes and the large ground and all, uh, that is a bit different, dif uh, different thing for him. So he is telling, he had an idea about the city boy. He is giving that idea. I have heard that the boys from the city are bit arrogant. Arrogant is bit proud like big headed. Uh, now the people who live in villages, they have some ideas. The people who live in cities, they are a bit different. So the, this boy who is telling us the story, he also have the same, he also has the same idea about that. So he is telling, he has the idea that the boys who are in this ground, they are a uh, bit arrogant. That means little bit proud, big headed like that. Mutalihami, this is the under 16 hundred meters next will be the under 13 event you are taking part in that in this point we are knowing that the person who is telling us the story is called Mudali Hami from that name you can identify that he has come from a village so Mudali Hami this is the under 16 now the race what is happening is under 16 one next one is uh, under 13 that's mean Mudalihami is going to participate for under 13 event don't look so scared now we got to know that he has come from a village and he has uh, facing this environment bit different to him so he's bit scared uh, afraid about that environment so I'm sure you can win. So the teacher who has come with Mudalihami give the uh, idea, uh, give positive ideas to Mudalihami that you can win this race. Said the sports teacher while pinning number 27 on the front and the back of my vest. That means she is the person, the sports teacher uh, has come with Mudalihami and she is going to pin the numbers. You know when we are uh, doing an event, a running event, uh, you have a number. When you are doing sports meet and all, if you are running, you know that uh, you have numbers. So Mudalihami's number is number 27 and the teacher is pinning that. And while she is doing that, she is giving, she is an encouraging Mudalihami to face this event because from earlier part we got to know that Mudalihami is a bit nervous because he has come to a different place. He has uh, come to a city from a village so he has a bit different idea about the environment so the teacher helps him to overcome from that situation. Then I wished the paper was bit enough to cover the stain on the front of my vest stain is there, a pot, a pot is there in his waist. Uh, so he has come from far away village and he, he was uh, looking at those boys, they are wearing white shoes, white socks and he has a bit of a uh, bit of problem that he uh, his way uh, in his uh, uh, waist there is a stain. So uh, he hoped that the number what the teacher is spinning, if it is a bit uh, big, it can be covered his stain in his uh, waist. Will the city boy see it and laugh at me? So from this part you can identify what Mudalihami thinks about the city boys or the people who live in city. He thinks they are rich. They are big headed, they are proud and when they see these uh, things but he has uh, the stain in his vest and uh, the, uh, the look of him, they may, may they will laugh about him. Uh, so he has that uh, idea in his mind. There, listen Mudalihami, your number is being called. Now the number is being called, Mudalihami's number is being called, hurry up my boy. The teacher is always supporting him. Uh, so that's what she is telling like that. 
how should I go to the starting point? Should I walk or should I run? Because he doesn't have the idea. He has come to this kind of large um, ground at the first time. So he doesn't know how to go to the race. So he's telling, he's asking whether he has to walk or run. Some of the boys are wearing shoes with spikes. You know, the children who have uh, money or who can afford money, they, are, they can wear spikes when we, they are running. But the thing is, Mudali Hami doesn't have those things. So, he is just, uh, he is a bit nervous about that. He was thinking the other students who have come to the race from city, they have spikes, they have shoes, good shoes. But uh, he doesn't have those things, so he is thinking whether he can run with these students, these uh, players. Will they step on my feet? That is a big problem to him because they are wearing spike shoes, so he has a problem. If they have trampled his legs, what is happening to his legs? Because he is running uh, with bare foot. Then, will I be able to complete with them and win? Mudalihami has different question, many question in his mind because he is a person who has come from a village and he has come to the city so he has a different kind of uh, problems and questions regarding this race how to face this one thing is certain if i win father mother and everyone in my family will be happy you can see the happiness or you you can see how nervous him uh, all the uh, emotions what he has in his mind the ideas while we are reading things so while we are reading this kind of, of paragraphs you have to get the points about the situation of, uh, of these uh, paragraphs then Come on Saroj, come on Priyan, come on Janak, that means other uh, students who have come to see the race, they are cheering their friends. Who will say, come on Muddalihami, because he has come with his teacher, no one is there to cheer him, so Muddalihami is a bit sad about that. I remember my friends cheering me at the house meet, it gave me a lot of courage that day. Uh, when a uh, runner is running, when others are cheering, it gives an encouragement to him. Here, Mudaliham doesn't have any friends, so he is thinking if other friends are there, how he feels at the moment. Ready, steady, go. The uh, race started. A boy wearing spikes is running fast just next to me. I must run faster than him. Will he step on my foot? Never mind. Let him. I will still run faster. Now it's close to the end. I think I have won. You can identify the feelings of Mudalihami. Even though he doesn't have many things like the boys who are running with him, he has the courage to do this thing. He has the courage to uh, finish this event because he has a good teacher and the teacher is encouraging him. So finally, he thinks that he has won the uh, race. We'll see whether he has won it. Here is another result under 13, 100 meters. First place, Kalubandage Mudalihami. So he is the winner. I heard the loudspeaker announcing my name. It was like a dream come true. Everyone was cheering. Now, even though he doesn't have any friend there, the other students who have come to see the race was cheering him when the announcer was saying that the winner of 100 meters is Mudalihami. Everyone was clapping. But he was thinking earlier, he was thinking that the city, whether city boys are laughing him or just making fun of him. But finally, it was changed. Nothing has happened like that. When he won the race, all were clapping. I couldn't hear what the loudspeaker announced because of the cheering. The boy who was wearing the spike shoes was on my right. He had won the second place. Congratulations, Mudalihami, you were great, he said, shaking my hand. So, what Mudalihami thought about the students or the boys in uh, city was uh, wrong actually. Finally, when he won the race, the uh, other uh, students who participated to the race came to him and wished him. The boy who came in the third also joined him. I think... I was mistaken earlier. After all, city boys are good. So what he was thinking earlier was different. But now he, what he was think, he's thinking is different because all were cheering, all were encouraging him now and wishing him. 
I knew you would win Muzali Hami, good boy, the sports teacher said as he gently stuck my head and tears of joy welled up in my eyes. That's what happened finally. Mudali Hami won the race and whatever he had in his mind about the city boys and what he felt about himself earlier, all things was changed under the after winning this race. Okay, now we are moving to the questions. We have read all the paragraphs given and uh, now here we have to do activity 5, that is a reading activity. Read the extract from the story 100 meters and answer the questions. Here we have to uh, read the questions and answer these questions. We will move to the first question. Who disappeared among the crowd? Can you remember who disappeared among the crowd when we were starting the lesson? The sports teacher asked me to wait there and disappeared among the crowd. So, we know who disappeared among the crowd. So, what is the answer for this? When we are reading this question, you can identify the question was asked in past simple tense. So, when, we are, when you are giving the answer, you have to use past simple tense. Who disappeared among the crowd? You can write the answer as the sports teacher disappeared among the crowd. The sport teacher disappeared. You have to use past simple tense. The sports teacher disappeared among the crowd. So that is the answer for the first question. Then the second question. What had Mudali Hami heard about the city boys? We will see what he had heard. Here, I have heard that the boys from the city are a bit arrogant. He thought that the boys from city is a bit arrogant, that means a bit proud, a bit uh, big headed. So, that is what he was thinking about the uh, city boys. So, what had Mudali Hami heard? What he had heard? Now, here the question was asked in past perfect tense. So, when you are giving the answer, you have to use past perfect tense. So, you can write Mudali Hami had heard that the city boys are a bit arrogant. Mudali Hami had heard that the city boys are a bit arrogant. So, that is the answer for that. Third question, what was Mudali Hami's event? Can you remember what was Mudali Hami's event? Yes, the teacher was telling uh, under 16 race is over. Now we have to move to the under 13 event, 100 meters under 13 event. So that is what Mudali Hami participated. So what was Mudali Hami's event? Again, it is past. So you have to give the answer like Mudali Hami's event was. Because the uh, question was asked using uh, words, the, you have to use that when you are giving the answer. Mudali Hami's event was 100 meters under 13. Or you can use Mudali Hami's event was under 13, 100 meters race. Fourth one, who pinned the numbers on Mudali Hami's vest? Who did that? We knew that the sports teacher has done it. So you can use who pinned the question was asked using past tense so you can write Mudali Hami's vest was pinned by sports teacher. Mudali Hami's vest was pinned by sports teacher. Then the last question, why did Mudali Hami later think that the city boys were good? Why did Mudali Hami past tense? So, why did Mudali Hami later think that the city boys were good? Why did he think like that? Because the students, the other students who have participated for the race, who became second place and third place came and uh, wished him. As well as the other students who have come to watch the event, they have cheered. So, you can write the answer. Why did Mudali Hami later think that the city boys were good? You can write the answer like, I think I was mistaken earlier. After all, city boys are good because city boys were cheering and just wishing him. So Mudali Hami was uh, thinking that what he was thinking, what he was thinking about the 
uh, city boys were wrong and uh, these are the answers for these questions now we went through uh, activity 4 and we read the given uh, paragraphs and uh, we went through the questions and uh, we understood what is the tense the question was asked then we gave the answer so we have come to the end of this activity now we can move to the next activity